In today's video, we're going to yap about the 10 players who I've drafted the most of in paid fantasy football leagues. This is by far and away my favorite feature on the Underdog Fantasy app is the fact that they literally just keep track your exposure, your percentages of players. It is literally like playing the stock market, and it's what makes it so addicting and fun, all right? So we're going to look at my top 10 players who I have the most exposure to. I guess you could say they're my favorite values in drafts based off their current ADP. Like, obviously, having a guy like Jalen Tolbert on this list does not mean I like him more than CD Lamb. It just means, like, you don't have the opportunity to draft CD Lamb all the time unless you're a top five pick, whereas you could get Jalen Tolbert in the very last round of your drafts every single time. So it is more value, I think. And I will say I've been drafting these teams since March because they open up their best ball drafts uh, right after the Super Bowl. And they're $3 to join. It is the single best way to like stay on top of news and, and drafts and see pockets of value and, and all that stuff and just get prepared for your actual draft this August and September. But I've been drafting since March. So some of these exposure numbers were maybe a little bit premature, maybe a little front loaded. You know, they were pre NFL draft, maybe pre free agent signings. And I don't feel exactly the same way anymore, but we're going to work through the 10 players, talk about whether or not I'd still draft them at their price, whether or not I still feel good about the high exposure and what I think you should be doing with them this summer. And the other thing, because I've been drafting since March, like a lot of these players, their ADPs or where they were getting drafted was a lot lower at the time. So you might look at some of these players and be like, he's a fourth round pick now. That's a terrible draft spot. Yap, 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 yap. Just tuck your damn shirts and you know I came pre-tucked. Let's talk about the number one most exposed player I am. I'm talking about I'm vulnerable to Josh Palmer. He is my most own player 36.6 percent of drafts i own him in he is currently the wide receiver 51 he was like the wide receiver 70 when the spring started even at this price tag of 51 i'm still easily buying right the chargers have no real defined pecking order with keenan mike williams everett eckler all gone and he's like the only player that has any sort of rapport with justin herbert okay so like lad mcconkey's a slot guy dj chark is like the two there right so palmer is the only dude i feel confident in staying on the field for 95% of the routes here, all right? And as much as I'm off of Justin Herbert in fantasy this year, he's still a gunslinger, and they're still going to ask him to throw the ball 500-plus times. So Josh Palmer will have you know a 22% target share and put up a really nice floor play, all right? So still love Josh Palmer. My next highest-owned player is Najee Harris, 29.3%. He is the running back 21, and I'll save you all the Najee Harris spiel because I do it pretty much uh, once – per video at this point of the summer. But to to do it real quickly, we look at Arthur Smith coming over, who has been able to pr produce running back production at a very high level outside of Bijan last year, of course. But the offensive line has gotten an insane amount of investment. First, second, and fourth round picks this year. First round pick last year. This will be an extremely heavy two tight end set. So extra blocker on the line of scrimmage. Darnell Washington, beast. Deontay Johnson is gone. So I think Najee and Jalen Warren are both going to see a very large uptick in targets as well, which becomes more valuable. Najee Harris is obviously the goal line back here. Uh, having Russ over Kenny Pickett is going to be a huge upgrade for the offense. So Najee has a back-end RB2. Take them all day. Third most owned player is Mr. Pop, Demario Douglas, 26.8%. He's actually tied with the next two players, Tyler Lockett and Josh Downs. So Pop is the wide receiver 70 Lockett is the wide receiver 52. Josh Downs is the wide receiver 64. So Pop, he just you know had a fantastic rookie season in, a, in an anemic offense uh, if Drake May is better than people are you know maybe giving credit for even Jacoby Brissett will probably start a decent amount of games this year like he has been able to hold up fantasy players over the last half decade like he's been able to make dudes super fantasy relevant pop has great speed four for four speed uh, 95th percentile burst score he's top 25 in yak last year despite missing three games and playing on fewer than 50% of the snaps in like six of the 14 games he did play. He's a guy that they're going to manufacture touches uh, for. He's going to have a really high floor. Um, and when you think about the other receivers on the roster, they have like Jalen Polk, Javon Baker, KJ Osborne. They're all outside dudes. They're all perimeter players where Pop's going to be the safety valve over the middle of the field. And Drake may already comped him to Josh Downs. Them two went to college together, played at UNC together. So I, I, I think them two are becoming really comfortable together. Love Poppy D. All right. And speaking of Josh Downs, he is also, again, tied with a 26.8% exposure. I think Josh Downs is one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL. And I don't, I don't think that will be the case come the end of this year. I don't think people understand just how good he, he is as a receiver because his production did not match like 
who he is as an individual player. So let's let's list off some crazy numbers with Josh Downs. First off, let's look at his reception perception profile by Matt Harmon, a great resource. You should absolutely subscribe to it, receptionperception.com. Josh Downs finished in the 93rd percentile in terms of success rate versus man coverage last year. That is really high. 82nd percentile versus zone, nearly 70th percentile versus press. This is like a damn near high-end wide receiver one veteran type reception perception profile, okay? His win rate versus man coverage was top 10 per player profiler last year. When you look at the list of rookie wide receivers since the year 2000 that have had 68 or more catches and 700 yards as a rookie, look at this list. Very heavy in 2023. But look at the other names on this list that Josh Downs fits into. He had a target rate of over 20% as a rookie. He had almost 100 targets. Like, naturally, this dude was top 10 in contested catch rate, 58.3%. And that was probably his single best attribute coming out of UNC. He is literally like Steve Smith at the point of attack on the ball. The other thing I'm, like, excited about is what I'm hearing out of camp is while this will be a relatively run-heavy offense— it seems as if they are going to let Anthony Richardson kind of unleash his arm, and they're going to pass a little bit more than people are kind of giving credit for. And the Colts ran the single highest-paced offense in the NFL last year under Shane Sykin. They also ran the fifth most 11 personnel plays last year, which means even if Josh Downs is just a slot guy, like they're using three wide receivers on the field all the time. So Downs, I think, is just flying crazy under the radar, right? So mark my words, he's going to have some wildly explosive weeks in 2024. Going back to Tyler Lockett, again, 26.8% exposure here. This is just, you know, perennially underrated. He is perennially top 10 owned player for me on these underdog drafts. And I get it. The bear case here is that he's another year older. He's 31 years old. He's coming off his first real down year, right? He had four straight 1,000-yard seasons prior to 2023. uh, And then he failed to hit 900 yards and saw his touchdowns drop below eight which was the first time since 2017 he did that. And the looming threat of Jackson Smith and Jigba makes sense. I think there's a chance that all of that is real. I also think there's a chance that this offense just had a really, really down year relative to how they should perform with this personnel. Uh, They lost both their starting tackles in week one, and their blocking absolutely flopped. Despite that, Tyler Lockett still ran a route on 96% of their dropbacks last year. So I think while JSN will definitely get more involved as a sophomore, I think his uptick in play time won't come at the expense of Lockett, but it will come because they're going to be running way more three wide receiver sets because of their new OC, Ryan Grubb, coming out of the University of Washington. So Lockett at the price of wide receiver 52, still very much on board with him. Uh, Now, this is his reception perception profile from last year. This is not 2023. This is 2022 going into 2023. Uh, He has not done the 2023 chart yet, but since he is one of Matt's favorite players, I'm assuming he will, and he might have fallen off completely, so I don't want to like harp on this. This could be completely irrelevant, but the first sentence of his profile from last year was, Lockett is perhaps the best speed flanker in the NFL right now. That's not an exaggeration. So I didn't really see anything last year that would make me think Lockett fell off traumatically from these insane, efficient numbers that he put up. So I'm still in on Lockett, Um, even if he's not the dude who can provide us with a really high ceiling anymore. I still think he's a nice floor play outside of the top 50 wide receivers. So Pop Douglas, Lockett, Josh Downs, those are all heavy sleeper names uh, in the draft guide right now, which is live. It's got the lists of uh, all the sleepers that we love this year outside of the, the first 100 picks. It's got our must draft players, our all fade players. It's got our rankings, which that is the only place you will be able to find our rankings, full PPR, standard half PPR, super flex, uh, one QB, all that kind of stuff. We talked about Shane Steichen running the fastest pace offense in the NFL. Those types of tiebreaker stats while you're on the clock are also in the draft guide right now. All right. So that is available on bdge.co bdg.co for full price but for a heavy 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 discount the cheapest way to get it is by downloading the underdog fantasy app and when you download the underdog fantasy app and you deposit just ten dollars on there using code bdge underdog fantasy deposit 10 using bdge not only are you getting the draft guide email to you absolutely free but you will get a deposit match on underdog so you can come draft with us like i said the best part about underdog i swear their best feature outside of giving you the draft guide for free is the exposure all right so you throw 10 bucks on there, you download it with promo code BDGE, you'll have 20 to play with. You could do six drafts and you'll see 
based on that, right? When you put your money where your mouth is, you see who your favorite values are. You see who your favorite players are really, really, really quickly. And the ADPs are sharp. You start to get muscle memory. You know exactly who should be going where. So by the time you are doing your real drafts, you'll know exactly what players to draft. You will draft a dominant team with your friends and family. All right. So go download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use code BDGE. $10 or more. They'll double it. They'll give you the draft guide. They'll give you a free square for week one. All right. You get our sleepers in that draft guide. Jalen Tolbert is a player that is on that sleeper list. All right. He is currently the wide receiver 87, and I have 24.4%. This is just a bet on the Dallas passing offense in hopes of them staying as pass-heavy as they were post-buy last year, right? After their Week 7 buy, Dak Prescott was the number one quarterback in all of fantasy football. A lot of that was because of CeeDee Lamb, but realistically, they don't have much on the depth chart, right? Jalen Tolbert is the wide receiver three on the depth chart right now. Brandon Cooks, like... I think he's as much on the chopping block uh, as an aging wide receiver as Tyler Lockett is, and I would say even more so, right? Cooks is actually coming off his second straight year of sub-700 receiving yards. He's only really highly regarded right now because he had eight receiving touchdowns last year. Uh, if he had a three, four, five touchdown year like he did in 2022, Cooks would probably be like a 14th round pick right now. All in all, I'm just saying I think there's room for another receiver to kind of emerge in that Dallas offense. And Tolbert should be the three wide receiver 87 fine with that so we've got two running backs tied with Jalen Tolbert at a 24.4 percent exposure and that is Tony Pollard and Jonathan Taylor in yesterday's video on Tony Pollard I went pretty in depth on dudes that have been skyrocketing up my rankings the last couple of weeks he was a dude that I'm getting more and more excited about and the overall gist of it was that I just don't think that we accounted enough for the injury last year and Nathan Janke Uh, of PFF made a great point because Tony Pollard came out and basically said, I wasn't healthy last year until about week 10 or 11. So Nathan Janke went and looked at the numbers from week 11 until the end of the season. He said, Pollard had a league leading 90.8 PFF rushing grade, 4.2 yards per carry, 3.3 yards after contact per attempt, and 0.28 avoided tackles per attempt, along with a 24% first down rate. His 92.3 PFF rushing grade over the past three seasons is the top mark among running backs who have played more than one season. Overall, this is going to be a pass-heavy offense that leans towards Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears' skill set. I think Tony Pollard will be the goal line back. I think he'll catch a lot of passes. I think he should finish between 225 and 250 touches, and a lot of those being really, really valuable. So the price that you get Tony Pollard right now at running back 29 is crazy to me and is like the perfect RB2 candidate in redraft leagues. Now, Jonathan Taylor, uh, you know, I just, I find myself using the turn pick on JT very often this year. If I have like the 111, 112 with the 201 or 202 in underdog, I can usually get Jonathan Taylor there. And I think a lot of the times I'd rather take JT, who's in a fast paced, high powered offense behind a top five offensive line. The offensive line rankings are also in the draft guide right now. Then question marks like Marv Harrison and Drake London, right? He's kind of just thrown in the middle of those guys. And I'll be honest, I ha- I was a bit surprised I had him this high because I'm like fine with him here as my running back one. But it's not really like I find myself reaching a ton. I feel like the hesitation I have is that he won't catch a ton of passes naturally because that's not who he is as a player. Plus, mobile QBs like Anthony Richardson don't dump off that much. We're also not exactly sure how the goal line is going to play itself out. Okay, so... Who gets the ball when they're on the three-yard line? Who gets the ball when they're on the one-yard line? You know, is it JT? Is it Anthony Richardson? We don't really know, so that makes me a little bit nervous. All right, after JT, we have three players tied at 22% exposure. We have Adam Thielen, we've got Zeke, and we've got Michael Wilson, my goat. Uh, Adam Thielen, a lot of this came very early in the offseason. A lot of my exposure, I remember my first like 10 drafts, I, I took him in the 14th, 15th round pretty much every single time. So it came before the Deontay Johnson signing. It came before they drafted Xavier Leggett in the first round. Regardless, though, I still think Adam Thielen as a, as a veteran is going to be a pretty big part of this Carolina passing offense. He won't get the targets that he did last year. He won't go over a thousand yards, but he's going to run primarily out of the slot with Deontay Johnson and either Mingo or Leggett on the other side. And this will be an offense that runs a lot of three wide receiver uh, sets. So we talk about the upgrades to the offensive line. I think that is what's going to keep them. That's what's going to keep a a slot receiver like Thielen on the field often because they won't need to put uh, a bunch of extra blocking tight ends on the field. Last year, their new head coach, Dave Canales, ranked top 12 in 11 personnel and in pass rate over expectation. And he's also just like one of the only receivers in this offense that has, similar to Palmer with Herbert, like built-in chemistry with Bryce because they just did it together last year. 
So I expect to jump up from Bryce. I expect a, uh, a decent floor from Adam Thielen. Again, he's wide receiver 73. So like for him to return value, not a very high bar. Zeke is still somehow going off the board at running back 38. And I've hammered away Zeke being like one of the single best value picks in all of fantasy football. He reunites with Dallas who loves him. He reunites with Mike McCarthy, who loves him. He reunites in the NFL's top scoring offense last year in terms of points per game in a backfield that is just absolutely uh, up for grabs in terms of touches and goal line scores and all that kind of stuff. And I don't see a reason why Zeke wouldn't be the top of that list. He'll share touches with Rico Dowdle and whoever else emerges. But like at worst, he's probably getting 55 percent of the opportunities in a really high powered offense. So love Zeke. Love Michael Wilson, right? We're all excited about Trey McBride. We're all excited about Marvin Harrison Jr., and I agree. I concur. However, 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 Michael Wilson is going to be the starting receiver opposite Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison is going to command a ton of attention. And Michael Wilson had a rock-solid rookie year, especially with like how, how under the radar he went. He was a day-two pick. He didn't play with Kyler Murray most of the year. Now we get a fully healthy Kyler Murray, um, again, with McBride and Marvin Harrison just commanding so much of the attention on defenses. I think Michael Wilson will be uh, a really, really solid fantasy pick over uh, different stretches of the year this year. Right. So Michael Wilson at wide receiver 75 is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. So those are my 10 most drafted players in real money leagues. Again, this is like the best way to prepare for your actual fantasy draft coming up. If you want to start drafting players and tracking your exposure, you could do that on Underdog Fantasy. When you download the app and you use our code BDGE, they're going to double whatever you put down and you get our draft guide for free. It is, you know, one of the best deals out maybe in the entire world right now. But just to recap, we have Josh Palmer, Najee Harris, Demario Douglas, Tyler Lockett, Josh Downs, Jalen Tolbert, Tony Pollard, Jonathan Taylor, Adam Thielen, Ezekiel Elliott, Michael Wilson. All right. 10 players that I just simply cannot stop wasting my money on. I'm out of here. Make sure you subscribe. I love you. Smoochies.